watching Telecom TV from ONS North America 2018 in Los Angeles. And I'm joined now by Amrith Kumar, who is a fellow at Verizon. Amrith, thanks for joining us on Thank Telecom you very TV. Much. Um, how is Verizon progressing with its network transformation work, the virtualization of its network, and, and this move towards incorporating more open source projects? Yeah, Verizon has a vibrant program to get our network functions virtualized. Uh, we have a fairly large open source uh, driven cloud. Uh, it's all over the world. We power many VNFs, virtual network functions on our cloud, and we're rapidly migrating other virtual network functions onto it as well. So on the whole, it's been a, a good, a good uh, project and it's going really well. And what's been the initial response from the OEM and, and, and vendor community um, to, to your requirements of what you want in your network moving forward? Yeah, so, so Verizon has always been a pioneer in some ways in these things. We were the first to come out with 3G, 4G LTE, and we hope to be the first with 5G, residential and mobile. And we see a lot of these new technologies which are coming out as being integral to our ability to innovate. The response from vendors has been fantastic. Um, we're a large provider and we have some very exacting requirements. And we've had some wonderful conversations with vendors on, on our approach to uh, networking, yes. And when we talk about the move to more um, open networking, what exactly do we mean? So, it's open networking is a, it's, it is as, as you say, it's somewhat confusing term. Um, the idea is all the way from the silicon, which used to be proprietary silicon, uh, all the way up to orchestration, which used to be proprietary orchestrators, and everything in between. The operating system which you use, um, the virtualization mechanisms which you use, you want to move those towards open source technologies or open technologies. In the case of silicon, for example, source is a hard thing to say. So, Rather than having proprietary silicon going to merchant silicon, going to an open source orchestration like ONAP, going to an open source cloud system like OpenStack, all of all six layers of that stack, transferring them to open source things, that's open networking in our mind. So even your VNFs, changing them to go to open standards is really something which is all part of open networking. Why is this of benefit to telcos? So one of the things which I, I, I've been working with open source for a long time, and I think one of the most important things which open source brings is the ability for a much wider group of people to come together and innovate. By having an open source project, having an open discussion, you quickly have a solution which can meet the needs of a variety of people, and you have standardization. When you have standardization and everybody can work together, you have innovation which is much faster, and then you can come out with products a whole lot faster. I mean, this, this, this move, we are coming across a new terminology that we've got to get used to. We're talking yep. white boxes, merchant silicon, mm -hmm. containers. containers. Yeah, can you explain how all this fits together? So, in the old days, when you wanted to run an application, you put it on a physical server, correct? Today we call that bare metal. Then we came up with virtualization, where we said you don't run directly on the bare metal, you run it in some encapsulation which virtualizes that hardware. So you don't really need to know what the hardware is, but you get something which is almost common and therefore you can move your, container, your, your virtual machine to another piece of hardware and it still works. By comparison to a virtual machine, containers are lightweight. So bare metal, virtual machines and containers are all abstractions for a compute a container is a lightweight abstraction, a virtual machine is a little bit heavier, and then you have bare metal. Eventually a container runs on a bare metal at some point. What about some of the um, open source projects um, that we're, we're talking about here at ONS? Because the Linux Foundation is, 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 is supporting so many of them. Mm -hmm. um, I know one of, the, one of the key ones the past 12 months has been ONAP. ONAP, yeah. So ONAP is an orchestration project. Really the important thing in order to operate a reliable service, in Verizon we have the most reliable network, in order to operate that network, it's not just about standing up the service quickly, that's important, but you need to have continuous monitoring over its lifetime. When there's an issue, it should self-heal. All of those things need to be automated. ONAP as a project makes all of those things easy uh, and makes it possible for you re to really operate a very reliable infrastructure. That's what ONAP is. And finally, how much of what we've been talking about um, 
impacts into, into, into future strategies? I mean, we've got the, the evolution of 5G mm -hmm. coming along. Hopefully 5G will enable new business models, mm -hmm. new revenue opportunities, etc. So how, how much of this um, open networking is relevant there? I think it's very relevant because it's changing the way in which we think about a lot of things. Listening to people, vendors today talk about how they're working with other vendors, working with other people in the ecosystem, it's fundamentally transforming the ecosystems which we work in. I think it's going to make business models emerge much faster and it's going to make it much easier for people to deploy services quickly. So it's going to accelerate the pace of things. Like, like everything else we're seeing, cycles are becoming much faster. I think open source, again, is going to be one of those things which accelerates it and open networking as well. And thank you very much indeed for joining us on Tonical TV. Thank you very much.